Hi, my name's Jia and I will be analysing the documentary The Happiest Guy in the World. The Happiest Guy in the World is a 2018 American short documentary directed by Lance Obenheim. This documentary explores the cruise ship life that Mario Salando has adopted. What is especially fascinating is that Salando has lived this unusual way for the past 19 years and claims that he will do so for the rest of his life. Throughout this presentation, I will cover and provide an analysis of this documentary's mode, content and style. These items will be identified and discussed while reflecting on how they influence each other and interplay to create the final result. The mode of this documentary is a mix of both expository and poetic. Salando narrates the documentary while it follows a clear linear structure, both of which are traditional techniques of the expository mode. It is evident opium holds a high degree of control over visuals and sound by using them expressively to evoke a meditative mood throughout the course of this documentary, techniques that are central to the poetic mode. The happiest guy in the world takes a step back and looks at the bigger picture instead of purely depicting what people want to see, the facade of living on a cruise ship. This expository mode aims to educate the audience by portraying an accurate representation of a given reality. This documentary explores the reality Salando has created for himself, juxtaposed with the mundane reality of living on a cruise ship. At first we're exposed to shots of a typical cruise life. Tropical islands, people relaxing in the spa and beside the pool, and Salando drinking alcohol while listening to live music. These shots are brightly coloured, scenic, and have a soft glow with accompanying peaceful music, giving, them, uh, giving the film a dreamlike quality. It is clear Opium has deliberately made these creative choices to reflect the tranquil world Salando has convinced himself of. This world almost seems complete until we truly delve into his life and see behind this smokescreen. Although his chosen lifestyle is unusual, it isn't as glamorous as it would appear at first glance. The opening scene depicts Salando claiming to be the happiest guy in the world. However, it soon becomes apparent he has, for all intents and purposes, withdrawn from society and is hiding in his own world. Although he is surrounded by people, it is evident Salando lacks true companionship and survives off forced interactions with staff and other cruisegoers. Throughout this documentary, we see shots of Salando sitting with groups to him sitting alone, juxtaposed with grand empty dining tables or sitting alone in the background, hiding behind his laptop while the rest of the people on the cruise ship are taking part in activities. Benheim has chosen and edited these shots this way to further represent his detachment from people and his dislike of being part of a group dynamic. Cinematography has also been used to significant effect using architecture lines and different objects to visually reflect how boxed in and isolated Salando really is. After receiving an award for cruising for 19 years non-stop, the documentary intentionally cuts in the middle of this moment to a shot of Salando sitting in his small cabin eating chips while watching TV. This unexpected and poignant cut depicts how quickly a moment can wear off, just like the perceived value of living on a cruise ship. The content and style of this edit now makes you question, is this really the happiest guy in the world? After all, if you stay in one place long enough, it becomes your home, not a holiday. It is clear that Oppenheim's goal was to get past this smokescreen Salando has created to explore the deeper truth behind this self-described happiest guy in the world. This allows the viewer to really appreciate this documentary as they realise how easy it would have been for Opium to only show this smokescreen. Through experience both the luxury and mundane segments of Salando's life on the cruise ship, the viewer is able to truly be with the subject, engaging with his thoughts and the world in which he has chosen to live in. Oppenheim has effectively presented a story where the viewer ultimately reaches a state questioning the intentions of the film. This not only gives the documentary credibility, but something to connect with, making it all that more engaging. Opium's use of camera, lighting, editing and sound reflect the conflicting emotions he wants to convey through each part of his doco. Through the film techniques manipulated, the viewer's feelings they get to experience both given realities and are left to question if this type of lifestyle lived in this fashion is really a worthwhile path to happiness. It is evident that mode, content and style all work together to produce a very effective end result. Ovenheim's stylistic approach affects how we view the content, while the content paired with this individual style present us with the modes of this documentary.
Overall, Oppenheim has created a thought-provoking documentary that provides insight into the romanticism that can easily projected onto unusual lifestyles. Thank you for listening.